Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I am Michael Benitez. Today we're going to be do uh, doing another video about a very, very tragic train collision. I haven't done this in a while, but in this one, we'll be talking about one of the most infamous crashes in Canadian railroad history. This is a crash that is largely forgotten, but not to those who survived on that day. Today, we're going to be talking about... The Hinton Train Collision in Hinton, Canada. Let's hear the story about this terrifying ordeal. The accident occurred ac uh, across a half-mile stretch of a, uh, of track uh, on uh, owned by Via Line. This section of track ran between Jasper and Edson. This will be the site of one of the most terrifying wrecks in Canadian history. Maybe even the worst crash in Canadian history. It is the morning of February 8th, 1986, and Via Rail Train Number 4, the combined S Supercontinental and the uh, and the Skeena, is traveling from Jasper to Edmonton. The uh, but the way I say combined is because of this train was a combination of two trains, Via Rail's old, uh, uh, Supercontinental and the uh, and another train, the Skeena. The, uh, this train had 15 units. FP7 number 6566, F9 number 6633, baggage dormitory car number 617, coach and snack bar car number 3229, skyline dome car number 513, two sleeper cars, Ennishore and Elkut, a an operative locomotive in the middle of the train number 6300, Steam generator car number 15445, baggage car 9653, day-nighter coach uh, number 5703, cafe lounge car number, number 757, sleeper car escort, and steam generator car number, four, number, fi uh, no, number 1544. Uh, this, uh, now this is the order of the train. Now, I'm guess you viewers are wondering why was the train in this configuration? It was because that part of the train was going to go to a to one place, and the other part of the train was going to go to another location. The first two locomotives in the t in the five pa in, in the five cars originated from Vancouver, while the other uh, the other locomotive and the five other cars were from Prince Rupert. The the um the steam generator car at the end at the end of the train number fifteen four oh four was going to Edmonton for repairs. There were ninety four passengers, uh, fourteen steward uh, stewards, and seven crew members aboard the train. Mike Pelachetti and Emil uh, Emil Miller were at the controls of the train. Meanwhile, coming in the opposite direction is Canadian National Railways freight train number four thirteen. It is a massive train. The train is consists of national uh, of Canadian National number fi number fifty five eighty six, fifty sixty two, and fifty uh, and fifty oh f and fifty one oh four. The train is massive and consists of thirty five hoppers of grain, seven flat cars with large pipes, forty five hoppers of sulfur. 20 loaded car loaded tank cars, 6 grain cars, and a, and a caboose. This train it ha has 3 locomotives and 115 ca uh, freight cars. This train is massive. This train now at this moment the train is now uh, the train is now at Ed Edison. Once the train reached Edison, it it, it has a crew change uh, with John Edward Jack Hudson, Mark Edwards, and conductor and conductor Wayne Smitty Smith boarding the train. Edwards and Hudson are at the front unit, while while Wayne's uh, while Wayne Smith uh, Wayne, Wayne Smith, better known as Smitty by his colleagues, were was in the caboose of the train. Now, in this case, they decided to, they decided to board the train while it was still moving because basically, even though this was dangerous, it, it saved time having to start up and having to stop and start up at such a large and massive train. And so, Can Canadian National Number Four Thirteen continues on its way. 
Number 413 departs, uh, de departs Edson uh, at 6.40 a.m. in the morning. Then, after uh, after having two passenger uh, two eastbound trains pass, the train continues on to Harguin, w w which it reached by 8.20. Around the same time, the combined Via Rail train number 4 uh, had stopped at Hinton, but it was traveling 5 minutes late, and when it left Hinton, it would never reach its uh, it would never reach its uh, its next stop both trains were heading towards each other and uh, and it uh, had a reach a switch point the dispatch at Dalehurst to uh, gave a uh, gave um ve uh, ra uh, via rail fl uh, um train number 4 the right of way on the south track so she would uh, it would take the south track canadian national number 413 would take the north track however Something didn't go d according to plan. Canadian National Number Four Thirteen was supposed to stop. Hudson, uh, Hudson, and, and Edwards would make sure of this. However, so, er, all heck broke loose. The train didn't stop at the yellow light. Not even the red light. It just kept going, 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 going. It was a, it was at fifty nine miles an hour, nine nine miles faster than it was supposed to be running. Uh, Smitty in the caboose or uh, calls his crew uh, to see what's going on to the signals that he that he has just seen. He never gets a reply. Suddenly, Canadian National Four Thirteen jumps onto the main track again. She, uh, uh, the train is heading right for the via uh, the via rail train. Meanwhile, on the uh, on the Via Rail number four train, Kenneth Cuddle, a World War II veteran, is talking to a fellow uh, to a fellow man on the uh, in the dome car. When he notices something ahead of him, he sees lights, and so he just expects, "Oh, it's it's another train, and we're passing, and, and it's going to be passing us." However, the tra uh, the track the train was on it was only one track; it didn't have a passing track. Then. Cuddle realizes what just uh, what realizes the unthinkable is about to happen. He realizes that Canadian National Train Number Four Thirteen is is barreling down on his tra uh, on his train. He's only uh, able to mount the words "Oh my God!" before the unthinkable happens. Canadian National Train Number Four Thirteen was also carrying a hy hydraulic spreader at the front of the train. However. The, however, for some reason, the crew in the front unit of the locomotive uh, of the train did not make any attempt to uh, to stop or even slow down the train. It was barreling out of control. Then, the unthinkable happens. Both trains are barreling down on each other at a combined speed of 120 miles an hour. The same speed that the that the Colonial was heading in the Chase and Maryland accident when it collided with the Conrails. However, this will be far more frightening. The uh, the the Conrail crew try to uh, uh, try to stop the train, but it is too late. At 8:40 a.m. on February 8th, 1986, via Conrail train number four and Canadian National train number 413 collide at a top speed of a combined speed of 120 miles an hour. The the force is so uh, the force is so great. Many of the many of the freight cars in the freight train are literally launched into the air. One even crashes down on a sleeper car like a sumo wrestler. Then everything goes quiet. The dome car where th where Kenneth Cuddle, uh, Kenneth Cuddle was in was mere inches away from being crushed from the pile of debris in in front of him. Upon impact, the diesel's fuel uh, uh, leaked out and burst into flames. All crew, all crew members on both tra uh, on both lead units died in the uh, upon impact. Fire erupts in and nearly in all the car in the cars. The first two uh, via rail locomotives, the baggage car and the day car and the day car, are all in flames. People are being burned to death. Eighteen of the uh, eighteen people die in the day coach. However, one passenger in the in the dome car, Kenneth Cuddle's car, was thrown uh, out and was killed instantly. He was the only catastrophe in that spe specific car. The uh, the car the cars after the dome car uh, uh, fall to their sides, 
but there are no deaths. The last three passenger cars also stay on the tracks. However, there are many injuries in these cars. However, the first three locomotives and the first 76 cars of the Canadian National Freight Train have collided into a giant, uh, pow, uh, uh, a giant pile of junk heap. Uh, when Smith, uh, when Smitty's caboose slams to a halt, he sees a giant fireball in front of him and some of the cars that are left are still on the tracks. He, get, uh, he gets an order to the dispatcher. Then, he hears over the radio that the conductor of the Via, uh, via, uh, via Rail Train hearing about, uh, telling his side, his side of the story. Then, Smitty tries to call his crew to see what's going on. He never gets a reply. As of now... Mark Edwards and John and John Edward Hudson, also known as Jack, are dead, as well as many others. But he, uh, but Smitty doesn't have time to grieve. He goes up there and tr he goes up, uh, he goes up to the uh, crash site to see if anyone is still alive or could be able to be saved. When he real when he reaches the site, he knows he's never going to see his two crewmates ever again. Smitty is the only surviving crew member aboard his freight train. In the end, 23 people are killed in the collision. And there are 71 injuries in what would become one of the worst accidents in Canadian, in Canadian history as a railroad. However, after, after, the cleanup, after the rescue operations had begun, people started to wonder... How, what happened? How could this have happened to, to two trains? The answer became more complicated. First of all, it was obvious that the Canadian Nationals freight train was at fault because it had sped through the, sing it had sped through the signal, even though the Via Rail train had the right of way. But that's the thing. Why did the Canadian National train not stop? First of all, uh, the the blame would have been put on uh, put on Smitty, even though he be, even though he did say that uh, even though Smitty did say during his testimony that he didn't even think the train was out of control, just not going at the right not uh, but just going a bit too fast. But he tried calling Hudson on two of his radios, even Edwards. However, the, there was no reply. So that's the other question. What was happening in that in that first engine? Now it's very clear. Now uh, looking back at Hudson's history, it it learns a sad fact. Hudson had serious me uh, was a heavy smoker and also was suffering from diabetes and other medical problems, and he could have had a stroke on a at any moment. So it could be clear that he had a stroke in la uh, during the train uh, during the the train's trip, which caused him not to see, not to uh, not to see the la uh, not to stop the train. How uh, however, it was unknown to sh uh, for sure, due to the fact that uh, that all locomotives involved in the collision were totally destroyed. So it's un uh, so it was unclear if it uh, if. If Hudson's death was in the collision itself or a stroke on the train, and that's the other question: What about Mark Edwards, who was in the lead engine along with Hudson? It is also known that Hudson, M Edwards, and Smitty were suffering from uh, from engine uh, from railroad fatigue, which meant that they had not slept well. They didn't even sleep at all; and they only had a few hours of sleep. And so, it is no, uh, it could be that Mark Edwards had dozed off in the controls. Uh, how, uh, even though the same could have been said to Smitty, even though he did say he was awake in the final moments before the collision. But the, here's the other thing. In the first locomotive, there was a warning if a if so, if a train passed a light and if the, and within thirty seconds a si a siren would sound off, saying that the train needed to be stopped. However, the however a horseshoe would be put o over this pedal because of the annoying ra uh, of the annoying siren. How uh, however this was against law regulations, but was very possible in at all trains. In the end, the crash was put so solely to blame for for engineer fatigue and condu and condu and conductor error, and also the 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 safety board of the safety board also uh, blamed a uh, uh, Canadian National because they're for not monitor monitoring Hudson's health problems.
However, it was not. Uh, however, it wouldn't change anything. Still, twenty-three people were dead in one of the worst train crashes ever in a in a new North American history. The uh, the tra the uh, the crash site was so horrific that all uh, that all six locomotives involved in the crash well except the except the one uh, one in the middle car uh, in, the, in the middle of the uh, via rail train number six three hundred uh, uh, the others were scrapped. What do you guys think? What was the real reason for the cause of the train crash? To me, I guess it was fatigue. I guess that uh, uh, that Mark Edwards uh, f fell asleep and Hudson had a stroke on board, uh, on board the train. But Smitty, he would have done something to stop the train. He just didn't do it. That's why it was put on conductor error. The survivors on that day will never forget what happened to them on board that train. And people lost many loved ones, but Kenneth, Cur uh, but Kenneth Cuddle, the the World War II veteran in the in the dome car, survived and helped save many others. But he did say that during the fi during the fire after the crash, there was a huge explosion flashover. This killed many people. Uh, this killed many people in in the wreck. Let's just hope that a crash caused by by the driver fatigue, uh, fatigue will never happen again. But it has happened in the case of the Philadelphia accident in 2015 and many other accidents that have happened because of engineer fatigue or conductor failure, just like the wreck in 1918. Let me on, let me know in the comments what do you guys think? What caused the actual Hinton crash of 1986? Well, probably never. Uh, many people will probably never know, but it could have been engineer fatigue, anything. Let me know in the comments of what you guys think. What caused this horrific crash? I am Magonita signing out on the story of the of the Hinton cr uh, train crash of 1986. Oh.